And inside the stadium, the battle cry is sounded. SEC College Football Saturday from Jordan-Hare Stadium in Auburn, Alabama. It's the 23rd ranked Auburn Tigers against Arkansas State. A very pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to our coverage of SEC football. I'm Bob Rathbun, and a new partner with me this year in our coverage. Some 12 years after leaving Lexington, Kentucky, this former Wildcat is still in the top 10 all time in SEC football history with 74 touchdown passes. His name is Tim Couch, and he'll be joining us on our coverage all season long here on SEC College Football Saturday. Tim, welcome. It's thrilled to have you with us. Thank you so much, Bob. I wish I was still that young and could run around like that. <laughs> well, for Gene Chiswick and his Auburn Tigers, it is year two. Year one went great. They won eight games, won a bowl game. But the challenge for Gene Chizik getting ready for the start of 2010 is to manage some very lofty expectations. It will, Bob, and, that, and that's the challenge with this uh, coaching staff this year is to handle those expectations, bring the expectations down for these kids and not put too much on them. They did have a great year last year, and when that happens, the fan base is going to expect more the next year, especially when you bring in a top five recruiting class like they did nationally. And, of course, the big reason for those expectations is Cam Newton, who takes over at quarterback for the Tigers. I'm excited to see Cam Newton. Newton, and I know these fans are. It's, it's going to be like Christmas morning for these uh, fans here at the stadium today. And wait till, they, wait till you see the look on their face when they open that present. And it's a six foot five, 250 pound quarterback who can, who's got a cannon for an arm and who has elusiveness in the open field that will remind you of Vince Young. And he seems to be like the perfect quarterback to fit into Gus Malzahn's offensive system. 2010 marks the 70th year of college football here at Jordan Hare Stadium and the 118th year for football on the loveliest village on the plains. We'll be back with the kickoff Auburn Arkansas State after this. Welcome back, everybody, to our coverage of SEC College Football Saturday. I'm Fred Hickman here in our Atlanta studio. I'll be keeping you updated on all the action going on throughout the league through the rest of the evening, but it looks like a great night for football down on the plain. Let's go now to uh, Katie Fellinger, who gives us the weather updates. Well, you couldn't ask for more perfect football weather. A lot of sunshine to kick the game off here. But once that sun goes down, we are going to see the temperatures plummet pretty quickly here. Low dew points will do that. In other words, it's not too humid, but very pleasant for most of the game. All right, Katie, thanks so much. Our Wendy's texted in question for the evening has to do with who is going to win the SEC championship. You got four choices there. One, of course, is the rest of the field. And you can text your vote to 76884. We'll have the results later on in the evening. But right now, let's get you back down to Auburn. Auburn and Arkansas State, Bob and Tim have the call. Thank you very much, Fred. We look forward to working with you all season long back in the studio. Moments ago, the Auburn Tigers hit the field for the first time. Our matchup is Arkansas State and Auburn, and some common threads bind these two schools. And for more on that, we send it down to our field reporter, Jen Hildreth. Hey, Jen. Hey, Bob. So glad to be back here in college football. And you know, I tell you, after talking to the Auburn coaches yesterday, it became very clear that nobody, especially the Tigers, is taking this Arkansas State team lightly. The Red Wolves have played in some big games and played some big time teams really close. They almost knocked off number 13 Iowa last year. They took number four Texas down to the wire three years ago, and they beat Texas A&M in their season opener in 2008. Now, that connection you talked about, Bob, one that's very close between Arkansas State head coach Steve Roberts and Arkansas native and Auburn offensive coordinator Gus Malzahn. The two actually were teammates together for one semester at Washtenaw Baptist University in Arkadelphia, Arkansas. They became very good friends. They remain very close. And
And Gus Malzahn told us he's a guy I always root for, although Bob, I'm pretty sure he's making an exception to that rule tonight. Jim, thank you very much. You think of the enormity of college football, it's really a small circle in the end. Let's check our four keys to the game. The keys to the game for Arkansas State is to stay on schedule offensively. That means staying in manageable situations, no third and longs. Also, defensive discipline. Be ready to adjust to all the multiple sets that Gus Malzahn's offense will throw at you. For Auburn, it's eliminating the middle errors. Gene Chizik has stressed all offseason long, fewer penalties, and he's going to get it. Young defensive depth for Auburn. Last year they had no depth on the defensive, the defensive line and secondary. Now they do, but they're young and talented. Auburn has won the toss and they have elected to defer, so Auburn will kick off. Arkansas State will receive. Out of the Sun Belt Conference, Arkansas State comes into SEC territory. Taking on the open tie, Auburn Tigers in the opening game of the 2010 SEC season here on the Plains. It's been a big day of college football. We're thrilled to have you with us tonight for our primetime coverage of SEC College Football Saturday. For the Auburn Tigers, the very talented Wes Byron getting set to kick things off and get the new season started. And the deep men on the Near side is Dwayne Frampton, and Tashawn Holmes is with him. Frampton is going to be a playmaker, not only in the return game, but also expected to be a big part of the offense. It's Holmes coming out of the end zone with it. And he is taken down at the 12-yard line. Great special teams coverage by the Auburn Tigers, led by Jonathan Evans. For Arkansas State, they come out offensively here to start their first drive of the season. And Tim, tell us a little bit about Ryan Applin, their quarterback. Well, Ryan Applin is a guy who had to battle for his job in the offseason. Coaches liked the way he performed and take care, took care of the football. He's an athletic, smart kid who needs to stay in manageable situations this game. Don't turn the football over early. It's Lawson over the 20 after the 22. So a big game on first down for the Red Wolves. Our Toyota key players offensively. We talked about Frampton. He's 5'9", playing his first college game at Arkansas State as a junior tra college transfer. Sophomore wide receiver Allen Mews, a big target at 6'4". And Derek Newton's a preseason All-SEC performer. Stockamer with the reception. And Arkansas State comes out moving the football against Auburn defensively. Much like the Tigers, they go to the spread and they, they try to snap it as quickly as they can. But this time, the Auburn defense is there. Let's take a look at our Toyota key performers for the defense of Auburn. Antoine Carter taking over at rush end, Josh Bynes. The leader in the middle of that defensive middle linebacker. And welcome back to Zach Etheridge, who left this stadium last October with a serious neck injury. He returns as a starter for his senior season. Much more, of course, on that story as the evening unfolds. Applin. To the 29. He needs to get to the 40 for the first down. It's a gain of two yards. Zach Clayton made the tackle for the Tigers. That's a good play there, Bob, by Ryan Applin. That's what I'm talking about, by not forcing the issue. Nothing's there. Just tuck it, run it, get what you can, and try to convert here on third down. Three receivers wide to the top of your screen, and Frampton, number nine, is the H-back in this alignment, nearest to the formation. Applin gets some pressure, escapes. And the pass is caught at the 45-yard line. And there is Dwayne Frampton. You see, we talked about the athletic ability in the opener. This is Ryan Applin showing why he won the job in the offseason. And that's a heck of a throw. Low and away, on the run, rolling to his right. Dwayne Frampton, this guy we'll be talking about the rest of the night. He's a big-time playmaker for that Arkansas State offense. At 5'9", 
a Los Angeles product, not only in high school at Dorsey, but also at L.A. Harbor College. And he has found his way to Jonesboro, Arkansas, and now to Auburn, and a big player, and makes a big play for Arkansas State. And Applin has to burn a timeout. We'll take a break and come back. It's going to be Arkansas State first and 10 at their own 45. Pass Avocados kicks off tonight's game from Auburn. Tremendous atmosphere here at Jordan Hare Stadium. Arkansas State with the game's first possession. The head coach, Steve Roberts, Jim talked about him earlier, now in his ninth season at Arkansas State. Was the Sun Belt's coach of the year in 2005 when they won the championship. And he has got his ball club ready to play here on this initial drive. First and 10 from their own 45. And this running back is Derek Lawson. And he'll take it over midfield to the Auburn 48. Applin has been impressive early. He really has, and that's uh, something you worry about with Arkansas State. They come into an environment like this, opening game of the season, all these people here loud. He's handled it well so far. The play game's four, second down six. Second and six. <laughs> Lawson. Scrambles for a yard. Josh Bynes making yet another tackle. He led Auburn in that category a year ago, was number seven in the SEC, and was preseason first team all conference. The spiritual leader of that Auburn defense. Third and five. Third and five. to the 50 and stopped. It's Henderson making the catch, but no gain as Aaron Savage, who is back playing his first game since the 2007 Iron Bowl. He's missed the last two seasons with injury. He comes up to make the play on third down and force the game's first punt. Great to see Aaron Savage back out on the field. He's had so many injuries throughout his career. A guy's battled back. Just excellent job there by the Auburn defense, forcing a blitz, a quick throw, and making the tackle short of the first down. Neely Sullivan. This is his first punt as a collegian. A redshirt junior kicks it away. And this one is going to be fielded by Carr at the 10. And he gets it out to the 21-yard line. A 41-yard punt. Glendarius Carr with the return. Auburn. And the unveiling of Cam Newton when we come back. Fred, that is indeed our first shocker of the new year in the SEC. We're back in Auburn. No score. First quarter, 10-29. Arkansas State put together an eight-play, 37-yard drive before the defense stiffened and forced a punt. And now the moment that all Tiger fans have been waiting for, Tim, and that is the arrival of Cam Newton. Well, you hear the crowd, Bob, and for Cam Newton, this is about keeping your emotions in check. I know you've waited a long time to get back to big-time college football, but let the game come to you. First and 10 from the 21. And it is going to be Ontario McCaleb carrying it over the 25 to the 27-yard line. Our Toyota key players offensively for the Tigers. Senior Mario Fannin takes over for Ben Tate at tailback. Wide receiver Darvin Adams set an Auburn record with last year with 60 catches. And Big Lee Zimba's back for his senior year, anchoring a veteran offensive line. Cam looking downfield. And it's caught at the 43-yard line. Wonderful grab by Darvin Adams. 16-yard pickup, first down, Auburn. This is what all the excitement's about. Cam Newton gets out on the corner, showing his athletic ability, making a nice throw on the move, 
And as Gus Malzahn wants, already up to the line of scrimmage and hurry up offense. They give to McCaleb. And a yard to the 43. Arkansas State defensively. Keep your eye on Brian Hall up front. Preseason player of the year defensively for Sunbelt Conference. Strong side linebacker Demario Davis led the Red Wolves in tackles okay. last year. And Darren Edwards, a junior college transfer, starts his first game at Arkansas State, sure to be tested by Cam Newton, Gus Malzahn, and company as the evening unfolds. The fake to Fannin. Cam takes it to the 48 yard line, where it becomes third down you know I got to think on this drive Bob at some point Cam wants to show off that arm you've got to pick and choose his time to do that and make sure it's the right time into single coverage but I think he's going to try to do it at some point real soon he can run but not for a first down on this occasion Auburn will punt as McKinnon came up to make the stop. Looks like they're going to go for it here. I guess they're going to trust. Uh, uh, no, here comes the punt team. They looks like they had to make a decision there. Cam Newton was staying on the field. He didn't want to come off after that first series. Number 17, Ryan Shoemaker, in punt formation for Auburn. Ready for the Number nine, Tigers Brandon. on the punt. Ryan Shoemaker, the senior who used to punt here, has been. Not doing that the last couple of years. Won the job this week. And he's getting ready to kick it away to Frampton. From the seven. And again, terrific special teams coverage by Auburn, led by Darvin Adams. 45 yard punt. Well, good job by Darvin Adams. A lot of freshman as a penalty flag went down back at midfield a lot of freshmen on those special teams for Auburn but a veteran goes down to lead them on this occasion well that's what you like to see and certainly when you have a lot of freshmen on your special teams unit there's a capability of having big plays Ken Williamson is our referee illegal formation on the offense more than four players lined up in the backfield the five yard penalty will be added to the end of the run first down and we'll take a break. 7.50 remaining in our opening quarter. Arkansas State, Auburn, scoreless. SEC College Football Saturday is brought to you by Ford, by Regions Bank, by Academy Sports and Outdoors, and by Geico Insurance. With Tim Couch, Jen Hildreth, and our crew, Bob Rathman back at Auburn. First quarter, 7.50 remaining. And Arkansas State gets the football for the second time in this quarter. Atlet. And wide open down the sideline is Muse. Muse over the 25 and down to the Auburn 23-yard line. Aaron Savage finally tracked him down, but not before a huge game for Arkansas State. Great poise by Ryan Applin. Backed up in your own territory. Showed a lot of poise, rolling out, finding the open guy, and delivering a perfect ball to him. Allen Muse. A 60-yard pass play. First down at the Auburn 21. Complete to the so mark his progress at the 16-yard line. Kendrick Murray made the reception, a six-yard pickup, and some pacing by the headman Gene Chiswick on the Auburn sideline. Meanwhile, Arkansas State under head coach Steve Roberts has gained a reputation of going into these types of venues. And playing very well. They won at Texas A&M and gave Iowa last year everything they could handle before losing by three. So this comes as no surprise to the Auburn coaching staff. 
but Applin, with some confusion, is forced to call a second timeout in the first quarter. Ted Roof gathers his defensive team to talk about it, and Applin is having quite a first quarter against the Auburn D. 5-4-5 five, five for 89 yards, and of course that 60-yard completion to Muse. Here is tonight's Wendy's texted in question. Who will win the SEC championship this season? A for Alabama, B for Auburn, C for Florida, or D the rest of the field? Text your answers to South 76884. Message and data rates may apply. No score with 638 remaining here in this first quarter. Applin and Philip Butterfield took the quarterback competition right down to the wire. Applin was named the starter this week, and he looks like a poised veteran, this redshirt sophomore. Second down, three, number 15. Throws to Frampton. To the 10. And that's another first down for Arkansas State, their fifth. This is a guy they want to get the football to in these type of situations, throw him screens, reverses, whatever they can do to get Frampton the football in space. He's the type of guy who can make you miss and make big plays for you. Ryan Applin out of Tampa, Florida, had off-season shoulder surgery. 100% as he starts his new year running and dances out near the 10. They'll mark him just inside that mark. Darren Bates came over to defend on the corner. Bates dropping down to play that hybrid linebacker spot for Auburn this year. He was in the secondary a year ago. Second down. Second down, Arkansas State can get a first down without scoring. They have to take it to the one. Applin keeps and goes nowhere. Josh Bynes. Applin hit near the line of scrimmage by number 17, Josh Bynes. Loss of one. Josh Bynes is a guy we're going to mention a lot tonight, Bob. He's the quarterback of that defense. He's the ultimate communicator. When he's out of the game, their communication fails and have a tendency for blown coverages. Third and ten. In this first quarter, Ryan Applin and the Red Wolves are one of two. Touchdown to Frampton, and Arkansas State takes the lead. Behind quarterback Ryan Applin and the playmaking ability of Dwayne Frampton. We've talked about it in the opener, Bob. This, I'm really impressed with Ryan Applin, the way he's handled this situation. We said he had to manage the offense, and he's doing that. He's keeping himself in manageable situations, no third and longs, and he's making plays. Number two, Brian Davis. Coming in to attempt the PAT is Brian Davis. And it is blocked. So Davis's first collegiate experience kicking results in a block, a true freshman. But Arkansas State still rejoicing over the touchdown pass. That's a nice ball right there by Ryan Apple. He finds a crease inside in the pocket. He steps up, finds Dwayne Frampton in the middle of, middle of the end zone, throws a perfect touch pass over the linebacker in front of the safety, Mike McNeil. Well, you may be asking at this point in the telecast, who are these guys? Arkansas State has come into Auburn and they take a 7-0 lead located in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Their first year of football dates back to 1911. And you will notice these names at the bottom, Bill Berge, Maurice Carthon, and then the cradle of coaches. Mike Tomlin coached at Arkansas State, Tommy Tuberville, of course, the former head coach here, and Ray Perkins. Some great names there, certainly. You know, this should come as no surprise. You know, I know the Auburn coaching staff is not surprised. When we talked to Ted Roof and Gus Malzahn, they talked about having to empty their barrel to, to hang in here and win this game. And they're going to show whatever they have to do to win this game. And Arkansas State come off, come out, has came out and got off to a great start. 6 nothing. 
Arkansas State. And Gene Chiswick, Trooper Taylor trying to rally the Tigers here in this first quarter at home with 518 remaining. Deep for the Tigers is DeMond Washington, number 14, Ontario McCaleb back there as well. Washington led the conference in kickoff return yardage last season. Bobby Zalud is the kickoff man for Arkansas State. Washington could be a game changer. And he takes it at the 13. And the rolling pile. That's the return up to the 42-yard line. A 31-yard kickoff return for Mr. Washington. Tonight's game is presented in high definition by H.H. H. Gregg. Now Mr. Newton steps on the floor. Tim Katz with the uh, a little bit of uh, pressure on his shoulders to go with all the high expectations. His team trailing six. Cam's going to try to run it, looking for the corner. A flag comes out at the 42 for a hold on Eric Smith. So Auburn will step back on their first play of this drive. Holding on the offense, number 32. Repeat, first down. That's exactly what Gus Malzahn had talked about. You know, you, you, you got to stay away from these type of penalties. I wouldn't be surprised if they get camp some easy completions right here, maybe some screens to these quick wide receivers and things like that just to get him going in this game. They give it to McCaleb over the 35 out to the 38-yard line. Nigel Bird with the tackle. Nigel Bird, rather, making the tackle for Arkansas State. And that takes it out to the 38-yard line. It's going to be second down and about 14. Second down, 14. Four wideouts for Newton. Down the sideline. Adams. Incomplete. Good battle there with Walter Moody on the corner. Well, you see the arm here, Bob, and the athletic ability to escape. On the run, rolling to his right, throws up a really good pass here. Darvin Adams normally comes down with that. Newton is now one of two. 18 yards. Looks to the bench for the play call. Third and 14. Can. First down into Arkansas State territory at the 47. A 16 yard pickup. This is what he can also do run with it. Yeah, he can certainly do this. He gets a great block here by his center, Ryan Q, on Darvis Woods, and he just uses his athletic ability to make plays. McCaleb. To the outside. Good pickup on first down. Got an eight and a half yard gain. No change in philosophy, of course, with Gus Miles on. He's just got more weapons at his disposal this year. They want to snap it quickly. On the toss, McCaleb. Inside the five, at the four. MD Jennings with the touchdown saving tackle after a 36 yard pickup. Nice job here by Ontario McCaleb getting out on the corner, getting a great block from Cody Burns and just using his athletic ability. He's got plenty of speed. He's their big playmaker in the backfield. First and goal. Into the end zone. Cody Burns, touchdown. 
And Auburn gets six back to tie the game. Wes Byram, one of the great kickers in Auburn history, ready for the extra point to put Auburn in front. And he drills it. 327 left in the first, and Auburn takes the lead. Yeah, Cody, Gus, Gus Malzahn said they would run about eight to ten plays of the Wildcat offense, Cody Burns being the Wildcat quarterback, and you see why. He's got a ton of athletic ability to see him go up and over and make the play. Cody Burns last year ran the football 56 times and scored five touchdowns. Threw it a handful of times, 15 out of the Wildcat. So interesting, Gus Malzahn recruited Cody Burns when Gus was the offensive coordinator at Arkansas to be the Razorback quarterback. And one of the big decisions that Cody Burns had to make was tell that coaching staff that he was willing and ready and able a year ago to give up his dreams of quarterbacking and do whatever it took for this club to win and that move meant moving into that Wildcat specialty area. The new man at the helm of course is Cam Newton and he rallied his team. It's a great answer drive right there by Cam Newton you know after Ryan Apple drove his team down put up six points Cam Newton had to come back and answer and he did. 7-6 Auburn, 3-27 remaining in this first quarter. Keep your eye, of course, if you look at the scoring drive on the return men for Arkansas State. The guy on the near side is Frampton. He's the man who scored the touchdown. They want to try to get the ball in his hands as often as possible. Five foot nine, 180 pounds. Byron to kick it away. Frampton from the two. And out to the 25 yard line. The tackle by number 20. The Red Wolves getting set down a point to get their hands on the football. But early impressions, Tim, on uh, Ryan Applin. I'm really impressed with him. You know, Hugh Freeze told us during the week that he expected for Auburn to come in and blitz him a ton, and they have. But young quarterback Ryan Applin has stood in there and handled the pressure. Seven for seven in this first quarter. And a jump. On the line, Keanu Prater was the man guilty. Prior to the snap, false start, offense number 67, five yard penalty, it remains first down. Now first and 15, Keanu Prater started 10 games at right guard last year had a great camp as they moved him over to left tackle for 2010. The Auburn defenders want some noise. This stadium's been fairly quiet. Applin sacked at the five. Nick Fairley. Antoine Carter. And a 14-yard loss. These are the type of plays that we talked about. They had to stay away from. They have a penalty to play before. Now they take a big sack. Now you're backed up, and you can't do anything right here to hurt the football team. A punt is okay right here. Second down and 29. Is going to keep it and he loses more yardage. And this time it's El Toro Freeman breaking through.
El Toro Freeman gets the start today at linebacker ahead of Craig Stevens. It was announced today before the game that Stevens is being held out by head coach Gene Chizik. It has nothing to do with any NCAA problems. But coach Chizik will be addressing that situation to the media after the game. From the end zone. And the carry by Lawson gets the ball out to the four yard line. Freeman again is there. And now the Red Wolves will punt it. Great job there by the Auburn Tiger defense answering the bell. They just get, gave up a big play on the drive before and a touchdown. Now they come back out, force a horrible series by Arkansas State and get the ball right back to Cam Newton. Well, Darius Carr getting set to take the punt here from Sullivan. Carr backpedals over the 50 from his own 46. Some running room and pushed out of bounds. 48 yard punt. And Auburn's going to get it with outstanding field position. The Tigers' last touchdown drive featured the running ability of quarterback Cam Newton, the great speed of Ontario McCaleb. And the terrific gamesmanship of Cody Burns. And now, Tim, these Tigers are starting to feel like they're getting the game on their side of the field. They are. You, you can certainly feel the momentum shifting here. Cam Newton got great field position to start this drive. Newton waits. Throws down the sideline. Wide open. Touchdown. Auburn. Mario Fannin. What a throw, and the patience he had in the pocket. That's exactly what you want to see out of your young quarterback. Those are the type of plays that he needs to get his confidence going, his offense's confidence going in him. Mario Finn is a guy who has played some wide receiver, running back for this team. He's kind of jack of all trades, and Newton threw a perfect pass to him down the sideline. Russ Byron adds the PAT to make it 14-6. Another look. Here, Cam Newton recognizes man coverage on Fannin. He gets a wheel route right here. Defensive back bites on it too much, and at that point, it's over. Cam just has to throw an accurate pass. Fannin goes and gets it. It's just that easy. For more on Cam Newton, let's set it down to Jim. Bob sitting here right next to the Auburn defense and I just watched Cam Newton walk off the field very excited as you might expect he walked right over to his defense started giving him high fives clearly passing the baton saying all right guys we did our job you keep doing your job now. You know the thing I like about Cam Newton he's a guy that came in with a ton of potential a ton of hype and you always wonder how guys like that are going to fit in with the rest of the team coming to a new football team. And you talk to these foot to the Auburn Tiger uh, players and they'll all tell you he came in and earned respect. They didn't give it to him. He worked. He was the first guy in every drill. He's watched all the film he needs to watch. This guy is the real deal. It really is an interesting dynamic when you have a new quarterback coming in to a veteran offensive team. It really is. And you know sometimes guys don't accept that. You know they've been here with with other quarterbacks who they kind of have de developed a relationship with. And then a new guy comes in with all the all the hype and everything that surrounds that. And Cam has really put all that stuff to the side and had everyone buy in to the fact that he is the guy for this football team. 14 6 with 60 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. Dwayne Frampton getting set to accept the kickoff here. Cody Parkey's going to kick this one away. And it is going to be Hall on this return. To the 23 yard line and 53 seconds remaining in this opening quarter. It was a 20 yard return. The yardage in the first quarter 
does not uh, sync up with the scoreboard. Arkansas State has 124 yards uh, before they lost a few on that last drive. Auburn started with 38, and now they've got 132. <laughs> 53 seconds left. Applin with a quick out to the 33-yard line. And Allen Muse had a big 60-yard gain earlier in the period, making the play. Muse last year caught six balls for 57 yards and is really a remarkable comeback story. Displaced by Hurricane Katrina, then some medical issues. Out to the near side, Robinson rolled up. Good coverage on the play by Desharman Bell, also over there. Very important drive here for Arkansas State. Even if you don't get any points out of this drive, you have to get a couple first downs on this to kind of get the momentum swinging back in your favor. Darren Bates was the other man in on the coverage. Incomplete. Just miscommunication there with his wide receiver. Applin thought he was going to break on the out route. The receiver took it up. They just saw something else, so they need to get on the same page there. Applin hit his first nine passes. That's his first incompletion. It's a heck of a start. Heck of a start. Incomplete. Two receivers and three defenders. Over there was McCants, number one, Robinson, number 10. And time for another punt. Coverage from DeMond Washington. Fourteen six Auburn. And Darius Carr dropping back deep for the Auburn Tigers. And Sullivan, the redshirt junior, former quarterback. Ready to deliver the ball. Carr takes the fair catch. Just outside the 20. A 42-yard punt. That is the end of the first quarter. Arkansas State struck first. But then Auburn with back-to-back -back scores. 14-6 Tigers after one. Auburn 14, Arkansas State 6 as we start the second quarter with our Jeep game summary. Applin, 9 of 11, hit his first nine in this game and a touchdown pass. Cam Newton so far, 2 for 3, 52 yards and a touchdown. And he's rushed the ball three times for 21. Yeah, certainly the story in the game early was the way Ryan Applin was handling all the pressure that Auburn was throwing at him. Started the game perfect, nine for nine, and now it's kind of flipped. The, the momentum has kind of switched over to Cam Newton settling in and doing what he does best. Michael Dyer's in the ball game now for the Auburn Tigers, and the Herald of Freshman with his first carry turns that corner and is pushed out of bounds to the 29. That's what everybody wants to see. This guy was the top running back in high school last year. Now, he can certainly do this. He has all the ability in the world to run the football. But where he needs to get better is in pass protections and picking up blitzes. Then he can stay on the football field. Dyer generally regarded as the number one high school running back in the country out of Little Rock, Arkansas. Another carry over the 30 to the 31. True freshman, 5'9", 215. Stopped that time by Timothy Starson. Great All-America. His high school stats. Just unbelievable for Dyer. 8,000 rushing yards and 89 touchdowns. On the reverse, and Arkansas State was ready for it. Darrell Zachary met and dropped by Dorvis Woods. In the backfield by number 92, Dorvis Woods. Our auto owner's insurance defensive coverage play. And Kenny Williamson will sort out the penalty. 
prior to the snap. False start, offense number 66. Five yard penalty, it remains second down. That's not going to make the head coach happy. No, Gene Chizik has stressed all, all camp long about the number of penalties they had last year. He wants to eliminate them. He's even implemented some grass drills, Bob, for the guys who've committed some penalties in practice. And for those who may not be familiar with grass drills, <laughs> maybe you can elaborate. Newton with the fake goes the other way. Swings it to Fannin, and he's taken down at the 12. That time it's Scales popping up. Jazz Scales getting back there to make that play. The backup left cornerback, a loss of seven. This is just a great job here on this drive by Arkansas State's defense. The momentum was clearly shifting to Auburn, and this thing was going to get out of hand pretty quickly if they didn't put an end to it. You've got to be impressed with the way they've came back out and answered the bell on this drive. Wrap around, hand off to Fanon. Harold to tackle out to the 20. And it will be fourth down in a punting situation. Number 17, Ryan Shoemaker. Ryan Shoemaker, the senior from Birmingham. Frampton dancing around, waiting for it at the 25. And runs up, drops down to his knees to make the fair catch. And great field position for Arkansas State at their own 42nd. <laughs> SEC College Football Saturday is proudly brought to you by your independent auto owners insurance agents. Back at Jordan Air Stadium in Auburn, Alabama. Bob Rathman, Tim Couch, Jen Hildreth, and our great crew with you. Back for another season of SEC College Football Saturday. We'll pick it up here in the second, 12-36 remaining. A 14-6 Auburn lead. Great field position for the Red Wolves on first and 10. Alpin looking. Pressure now. And escapes a little bit of punishment but does have to eat the football back at the 39 Antoine Carter coming on great pressure here by the Auburn defense Applin has some guys open down the field he just doesn't have time to set his feet and deliver a ball down the field so he just has to take a sack there and sometimes that's not the wrong play you know a sack is okay sometimes it's better than throwing the ball late down the middle and forcing the issue second and 17 pressure but the pass is complete out to the 42 yard line and it's Robinson making another grab Anthony Robinson is a senior from Little Rock has made only 10 catches in his career but tonight Robinson is they've thrown the ball to him a couple of times and he's caught two balls for eight yards Again, pressure and this one thrown away. As the game has worn on, Tim, the Auburn defensive pressure intensifies. It really has. Auburn's defense has settled in. Ted Roof had told us earlier in the week that it was the unknown, that they didn't know what Arkansas State was going to come out, what type of formations they were going to play. So he said the chalk would be flying early Offside. on in the game, trying to adjust. Defense, number 49, five-yard penalty. Repeat, third down. That penalty charge to Michael Goggins, the senior from Alexander City, Alabama. And Auburn has already accumulated four first-half penalties. Yeah, they're, they're certainly going to hear about that in the locker room at halftime from Gene Chizik. Third down by. Applin throwing. Incomplete. Stockhammer, the intended receiver. And you see how pressure affects a quarterback. Even though he wasn't under pressure on that particular play, it's the previous plays that's got him a little gun shy. And I know from experience, when you get hit a few times, 
it's not as easy to sit in there and make plays from the pocket. Does it cause you to play a little faster than you would? The game speeds up. Your mind speeds up. He actually had more time to stand in there and deliver an accurate ball than he, than he thought he had in his mind because he'd been under so much pressure the last uh, two series. Sullivan is the Arkansas State punter. And this one off the side of his foot, not a bounds, and we'll see where they mark this one. Auburn will take over at the 35-yard line. A timeout here at Auburn, 11.09 to go before halftime, 14-6 Tigers. Fred Hickman here with an SEC studio update. Earlier today, Florida taking on Miami of Ohio. Urban Meyer's team getting this in the second quarter. The Gators down three at Janoris Jenkins. Picking off the pass from quarterback Zach Dysert. Jenkins returning at 70 yards for the touchdown. The Gators go on to win 34-12. Not sharp, but a win nonetheless. The Wendy's texted in question, who's going to win the SEC this year? 76884 is how you vote. We'll keep you updated throughout the evening. Bob, back to you guys. It on. Okay, thank you very much, Fred. Michael Dyer with the carry as we come back to the action on first down. He gets it out to the 39-yard line. The Florida offense today had just 26 total yards entering the final quarter. Had three lost fumbles and turned the ball over on downs twice. So you know that Urban Myers not hey, He's happy with the win. I guess that Tebow guy really did make a difference. I guess so. Newton drops back, avoids the pressure, still on his feet. Now he's got some real estate. And out of bounds <laughs> at the 45. I'll tell you, Bob, all, all you can do is just laugh. I mean, it, when you ask Cam Newton to describe himself, the number one word that comes out of his mouth is elusive. And I mean, I don't even know how to describe that. I, I don't even have, I don't have that ability to do anything like that. So that, that's just unreal to me. He, he can make not, something out of nothing, and he's showing it right there. The bad part, he only got credit for 15 yards. <laughs> Cody Burns is in. And now this is uh, Carter with the throw. Down to the two yard line. Darvin Adams on a 47 yard pass play. Cody Burns with the pass. I beg your pardon. Burns really aired this one out, Tim. Well, Cam Newton had to take a break. He was so tired from scrambling around. So they, put in, they put in Cody Burns in the Wildcat, and he just throws a perfect ball. Just a ton of talent on this Auburn offense. And now it is Newton coming in. And the touchdown is in there by Antonio Goodwin. Cam Newton doing a terrific job for these Auburn Tigers rushing for the touchdown. He should have got actually more points because he did so much on that drive. Yeah, you want to give him a couple touchdowns on that drive. You know, he just he made some, he made some spectacular plays on that drive and obviously finished, out, finished it off with a little run down here and used his, used his big frame to just power it in the end zone. Wes Byron's kick is up and good. So Cam Newton opening some eyes on that drive with his athletic ability. 21-6 Auburn. Game ends. What really matters is how we represent our team, how we respect our opponent, and how we honor the game. Sportsmanship outlasts any game clock. Sportsmanship spans a lifetime. SEC College Football Saturday is brought to you by O'Charlie's, by Geico Insurance, by Toyota, and by Hass Avocados. Welcome back to Auburn, the beautiful sunset here at Jordan Harris Stadium. The lights taking full effect now on the field to play as we have nine minutes and 43 seconds remaining before halftime. And Auburn with a 21 to six lead. We're seeing what Cam Newton brings as an X factor, if you will, to this 
Auburn offense. We'll revisit that last drive in just a moment. The return man is Hall. Forty to the 45 and 46. And Tim, let's go back and look at that last Auburn drive and the uh, incredible elusiveness of Cam Newton. Yeah, you know, Bob, he, he just is an unbelievable talent. He can do everything. He's just so big and physical, elusive. He's got a great arm. And this here is actually Neil Cottle instead of Cody Burns. It happens so fast. They're just switching so quick to get him in. And then you see Cam Newton just use his big frame and power it in, much like a Tim Tebow would down around the goal line. Running back, Lawson takes it out. To about the 45, maybe the 46 yard line. What a throw by Neil Caudle. Well, you talk about a guy who has paid his dues. Knee injury, thumb injury, and from high school baseball, red shirted, separated shoulder, hung in there, grew up a big Auburn fan, sees his stock drop a notch to third string on the depth chart with the addition of Cam Newton and Baron Trotter, and comes in and throws a strike on his first pass of the season. Speaking of strikes, a completion out to the 33-yard line to Frampton. Yeah, maybe that throw will get Ryan Applin going. He started the game 9 out of 9 for 119 yards. He's since been 1 out of 4 for 4 yards. So hopefully that pass can get him back on track. First and 10 from the 34. The swing to Frampton, and he's forced Collin down at the 32-yard line. Here's Zach Etheridge making the tackle for the Auburn Tigers. That's great to hear, isn't it, Bob? You know, guys, yes, just it is. last year was laying on the field and wasn't sure of his situation. Now you see him back out here making tackles and flying around like, he never, like, like it never happened. Complete to the 23. The last time Zach Etheridge, of course, played in the stadium, he left on a stretcher, a neck injury. He had torn ligaments in his neck and a cracked fifth vertebrae. And after a collision that ended with Ole Miss running back Rodney Scott underneath him, Zach Etheridge was delicately lifted out of this stadium on the stretcher. And all's well that ends well. But keep in mind, Zach Etheridge was just cleared for contact two weeks ago. And he starts on opening night. Amazing story. Incomplete, incomplete pass. Not a fumble. Robinson never had it. See the Auburn defense confusing Ryan Applin a little bit there. They had a blitz called originally. Applin walks up, changes the play at the line of scrimmage, and all of a sudden you see Auburn defense audible back to a cover two zone, which completely stopped that play. Second and 10 from the 23. Applin running. 15, 13 yard line. Ultimately rolled up by Jessel Curry after an eight yard gain. Jessel Curry, a true freshman. Do you remember the name Buddy Curry who played in North Carolina? That's his boy. Getting a start in his first game here on the Plains. Out of Buford, Georgia, and that unbelievable 2A program. First and 10. Applin with the carry. To about the 13, Josh Bynes credited with the first stop. Bynes, a Butkus watch, Bedneric watch player out of Florida. 167 career tackles coming into his senior season. Depth was so thin last year, it seemed like Bynes was in on every play defensively <laughs> for the Tigers. Gary to Robertson. He dances and gets into the end zone for the touchdown. A 13-yard run by Jermaine Robertson. And the man from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, 
comes back to his home state and scores a touchdown in Auburn. I have to be impressed with Arkansas State. You know, they, their team that Steve Roberts, he, his teams always play 60 minutes of football. They're never going to let up, and that's why they hang around in these games against these top tier teams, and that's why they play guys so tough. They, they never let up. Brian Davis to kick the PAT. And that makes it 21 to 13. Red shirt junior Jermaine Robertson with the touchdown. An eight point game. The touchdown by Jermaine Robertson and the extra point has made it 21 to 13 here at Auburn with 646 to go before halftime. Robertson's run was for 13 yards. It caps an eight play 55 yard drive that began with a 32 yard kickoff return. Don't forget that gave Arkansas State outstanding field position at the 46. A little wilder game than I had anticipated. It really is. I didn't expect it to be like this either, Bob. But, uh, you know, they're, they're taking advantage of their situation. As you said, they got a nice return on the kickoff right there. It set them up with nice field position. And that's what it's all about is capitalizing on your opportunities. A wild opening weekend of college football. We've seen one big surprise with Ole Miss going down to defeat to Jacksonville State in Oxford earlier today. Arkansas State struck first here now trail by eight with 644 to play. Demond Washington the deep man for Auburn. It's a short kick picked up at the 27 yard line. Eric Smith, the return man, out to the 35 as we check in with Jim. Well, Bob, we get a chance to see Cameron Newton again in just a few moments. And you guys have both talked about his presence on the field and being a leader. And he said one thing that has made him better at those things is his work with Gus Malzahn, who, Bob, I know you love this quote. He said, how much is Malzahn on me? 366 days a year, 25 hours, eight days a week. <laughs> That's some serious time. <laughs> you wake up and Gus is in your face. He's calling him on the phone, making sure he's wearing the right clothes and walking the right, right way down the street, the whole deal. The handoff to McCaleb. Turns that corner out to the 45-yard line. Ontario McCaleb, the sophomore, last year had uh, such the opening game against Louisiana Tech with 148 yards. And Gus chirping away is... They get him lined up and snap quickly. Newton. Over the 50 to the 48. Seven yard pickup. First down. When you see a quarterback like Cam Newton, Tim, with his ability to run the football on in any situation, not only just scrambling to make up for a broken play. We'll talk about it here as he floats one to Carr. When Darius with a catch, touchdown! How about that one? Drop that one right down the elevator shaft. 49 yard touchdown pass. He sure did. You know, when you get a quarterback like that with such a powerful arm, you always wonder what kind of touch can he put on the football. He's made two throws in this game already that one to Fannin and the, that one there that has just shown outstanding touch on his deep passes. West Byram for the point after. <laughs> and the kick good to make it now 28 to 13. Now this is what they came to see. Cam Newton. This is what everybody came to see. This is what all the hype was about in the offseason. When Darius Carr gets single coverage, and as you see, Cam Newton just floats in a perfect ball. 45 yards down the field, just a great throw. The point I was making about his ability to run, both as a, as a scrambler and also as a bona fide runner, is what does that do to the defense? Because now you got to guard all 11 instead of just 10. Well, it's a defensive coordinator's nightmare, I can tell you that. And when the quarterback has that much ability to not only throw the beat you down the field, throwing the football, 
and also beat you with his legs. It's it's so hard to prepare for. And if you put a spy on him, he's faster than most of the guys that are going to be spying him. So he just outruns it. He's it's just so hard to prepare for a guy like that. Cam Newton hooking up with that man, with Darius Carr. For the touchdown, Newton for the evening is four of five for 93 yards, and that his second touchdown pass of the night. I'm also very impressed with Newton's poise in the midst of all this excitement. I, I am too, and you know we talked about it in the opener. If he would just stay within himself, let the game come to him, and I thought he did a good job of that. He had a you know a three and out on the first drive. You know he could have shown some frustration right there, but he stayed with it. Let the game come to him, and now he's going to now he's making plays on a continuous basis. All and Crampton will drop back deep for Arkansas State. This kick will roll to the 25 yard line and the knee was down. On the uh, return. Robertson with the knee down so Arkansas State will start at the 26. 557. The time remaining here in this second quarter. Well, the Red Wolves coming out of the Sun Belt Conference. We mentioned they lost at Iowa last year 24 21 beat Texas A&M had a heartbreaking loss to the Texas Longhorns. And they have given Auburn quite the challenge here in the first half and another grab out to the 29 yard line. This one made by Lucius Henderson. Coming up the Toyota halftime report Fred Hickman in our studio with all the scores and highlights. He'll catch you up with what's happened in a big day and night in the SEC. Down seven. Certainly want to mention one score Kentucky 23 Louisville 16 final. 40 43 yard line as Robinson takes it for a big game and a penalty flag. Big play there Robinson showing some some good quicks getting around the corner. Base mask on Auburn. Personal foul, face mask on the defense, number 25. 15 yards from the end of the run, automatic first down. You see it here, Bates comes up. Fifth Auburn penalty for 40 yards. And that moves the football to the Auburn 41. Four wide receivers. And the throw goes to the outside. And Stockamer, one of those four wideouts that time, making the catch. Taylor is an Arkansas native. Last year he averaged nearly 22 yards per reception. That's the third best single season mark in Arkansas State history. And off this time to Lawson. And Derek Lawson, a native of Jonesboro, Arkansas, redshirt junior, with the carry out to about the 27 yard line. You know, it seems like, Bob, when Arkansas State is getting down here in the red zone, Auburn is showing a lot of blitz packages. Arkansas State has some opportunities to hit some big plays, especially down the middle of the field here. Lawson, six carries, 16 yards. Incomplete. Intended for Stockmer. Third time that Auburn has crashed through with some defensive pressure. That time was Antoine Carter. And of course, he's got some big shoes to fill at that left end spot. Being asked to replace all SEC performer Antonio Coleman. Now a Buffalo Bill. 28 to 13. This one is caught. Stockamer inside the 15. Nice grab. Down to the 13. Nico Thorpe with the tackle. Uh, just like I was talking about, there, 
They continue to blitz down here in the red zone. You, the middle of the field is wide open, and Arkansas State took advantage of it right there with a nice deep in cut by Taylor Stockhammer. First down and 10. Arkansas State, the throw outside, Frampton at the 10, at the 8, and ridden down. Thorpe got over there again. Four minute mark here in this second quarter. Auburn leading 28 13. Five yard pickup. Robertson. And he gets it back to the line of scrimmage. Again, Darren Bates, it's his seventh first half tackle. The loss is one yard, third down six. What are you thinking here, Mr. Playmaker? I think you get the ball to Frampton on something, or quick, something quick, maybe a slant. Like that. And just yep. knocked away at the last moment by Savage. Well, they tried to get it to Frampton. He just kind of rushed the throw a little bit and put it behind him. It's, uh, you know, they, they they've talked about it in, in tough situations and they get one-on-one -on -one coverage. This is a guy they want to go to. He's their go-to guy when when the when they need to make a big play. Now a field goal. Brian Davis. This is going to be a 26-yard attempt. And his first collegiate field goal attempt is good. The true freshman from Brentwood, Tennessee, tacks three points on the board, 28 to 16. Jen Hildreth. Bob, a good time to tell you about tonight's Regions Bank Scholar Athlete. It's Auburn safety Aaron Savage. Now the Tigers have 11 players on the roster who have already graduated. That's second in FBS. Pretty impressive. Savage even more impressive because he earned his master's degree last May in exercise science. As you talked about earlier, Tim, Savage missed the last two seasons with injuries. He petitioned the NCAA for a six year of eligibility, which obviously was granted. And clearly he made the most of his time in the classroom as well. He sure did, you know, and being at a college for six years, you know, has to be has to be tough, you know, going to school for that long and fighting injuries and the whole deal. So he's a guy that you certainly root for to get back out on the field and you want to see him do well. He went twice as long as you did. He went twice as long. I only went for uh, three years and, I, and it felt like nine. <laughs> But Aaron Savage, look at what he's had to overcome. The knee injury in 08, and then getting ready for last season, blows out his Achilles, can't play again. A terrific uh, study and determination, and uh, his educational uh, career path is also worth noting. Thank you, Jen. 10 play, 66 yard drive as Gene Chizik and his defensive coordinator, Arkansas Ted Roof, talk things over. Yeah, of course, Gene, a former defensive coordinator. Yeah, Gene's walking. How he made his mark. Exactly. Gene's walking over and telling Ted exactly what he sees and make sure they're on the same page. This Arkansas State offense has a ton of talent, and they can, they can hurt Auburn. And on Washington. Over the 30 to the 31. And Auburn will have the football with 257 left before halftime. Be interesting to see how Auburn comes out here, Bob. If they give Cam Newton the chance to go out and run a two-minute drill, will they have the lead, or will they just kind of sit on this thing and take it to halftime and uh, and see what happens? But uh, I'd like to see Cam Newton run a two-minute drill and see how he performs in it. So we'll see what Professor Malzahn has <laughs> up his sleeve on this. I'm guessing he goes. Whistle's going to blow the play dead. Zimba and Barry both jump prematurely. Rhythm, timing, you know, the speed of the game versus the speed of practice. All-star offense, number 73, five-yard penalty. 
It remains uh, first down. Well, Gene Chizik's head has to be about to explode right now, Bob, because when we sit in the meeting room with him, the first thing he said was we had too many mental errors last year. They've already had six for 45 yards. They're going to hear about it at halftime. And the pre-snap penalties were the ones that were most of a concern for Coach Chizik. Yeah, that's, that's the ones that really bother you. Those are just unforced mental errors. A timeout now. So it'll be first and 15. We'll be right back. We'll take time out with them. With our score, Auburn 28 and Arkansas State 16. If you're just joining us tonight, our coverage of SEC College Football Saturday from Auburn, the debut of Cam Newton at quarterback. And Tim Couch has done a little bit of everything tonight. He has. You know what I said? These fans were going to be like kids at Christmas waiting to open their presents, and they've opened it all right. This guy has shown everything. Ability to run, ability to escape, tough, hard nose running down around the goal line, and obviously throwing the deep ball, showing off that big arm, and the reason why everybody is excited about it. On first and 15, Mario Fannin. To the 28-yard line. Play games two yards. Second down, 13. Fake to McCaleb. And Newton to run with a lot of green grass in front of him. See you later. Touchdown, Auburn Tigers. Wow. Mm. He's, he's Vince Young with a Dante Culpepper arm, Bob. That's the best way I can describe him. 72 yards untouched to the end zone. It's, it's just so hard to prepare for. What we were talking about earlier is you cover everybody up in the secondary and you think you've done a good job defensively, and he tucks it and runs it for 70 yards. You just cannot prepare for that. Senior West Byron adds another point. 219 left before halftime and 35 points on the board. It, you just don't see this speed out of the quarterback position very often, and that's why everyone raves about his talents. I mean, you know, most quarterbacks are going to be caught right there and bumped out of bounds. It wasn't even close. He's just outrunning guys in the secondary, and, and he's and who wants to come up and hit him? You know, if you're a defensive back. He's 250 pounds. I mean, you won't know piece of that guy. He's probably going to run over if you do catch him. So it's just he's just so hard to deal with. You know, Gene Chizik is a guy, Bob, who's been around some big quarterbacks in the past. He was at Central Florida with Dante Culpepper. He was at Texas as a defensive coordinator with Vince Young. He was here as a defensive coordinator at Auburn with Jason Campbell. And now he's got a guy like this. So Gene's track record of having big quarterbacks is, is uh, pretty phenomenal. And these guys are all NFL guys. And Cam Newton's certainly going to follow in those footsteps. A very impressive first half for Coach Chizik. His new quarterback, Cam Newton. 35 to 16 Auburn. Another big crowd at Jordan Hare Stadium to welcome back the 2010 Auburn Tigers, and they have seen quite a half from their new quarterback. And it is just so great to have college football back. And over under the Frampton. Penalty. Ridden out of bounds at the 25 yard line. Penalty with 2.11 to play. McNeil with the special teams tackle. <laughs> Kenny Williamson and his crew sorting it out here. 
you know, last year. Here's Kenny. During the return, there were two fouls, both on the return team, a block in the back, number 34. That penalty is declined. Block in the back, number seven. That penalty is enforced. Half the distance to the goal, first down. You're talking about Newton's ability to run. Last season, 13 games for the Auburn Tigers. Their quarterbacks had one rush for 20 or more yards the entire season. Cam Newton just ran the ball 72 yards for a touchdown. And the longest rush by any Auburn Tiger last year was for 67 yards. Yeah, I think he's going to set quite a few records here, Bob, before this season's over. Crowd making some noise, cheering out the defense as we come to the end of the first half. Applin Gibbs. And the runner, Lawson, on the carry. Mike Blanc with the tackle. Dangerous situation here for Arkansas State's <laughs> offense. You're backed up. Your own territory, going, trying to run a two-minute drill. You can't have any turnovers down here and let Auburn go up even more right before the half. Two-yard pickup, second and eight. Once again. Lawson. Lawson on the carry. Takes it over the 16. At the 17 five, yard line. Arkansas State has one timeout at its disposal. And looks like they're going to use it here. No. Check that. Auburn's going to take the timeout. The start of the new season and a look toward the Auburn schedule and they jump right into conference play and that is a Thursday night game at Starkville. Quite a turnaround. Both clubs playing tonight. A little more taxing for Auburn having to go on the road. It sure is. You know and you that's what you worry about is how, how quick can your team bounce back with, with a short rest period like that especially going on the road starting conference play. And it doesn't get any easier when Clemson comes to town. It doesn't, you know, this, this is always a tough schedule. You know, being in the SEC, especially the SEC West, it's the toughest conference in America. There's four teams ranked in the top 25 in the West. Third and three. Etheridge. And a great stick by Zach Etheridge. Frampton made the catch. And a terrific stop by Etheridge. Third down, a uh, fourth down. Auburn takes a timeout. Our auto owner's insurance defensive coverage stick by Etheridge. Just very physical there from Zach Etheridge, and you'd love to see that out of him. You know, the, we had talked about the injury that he had and, and those type things, and, you know, you, you worry, Bob, about his parents, you know, I think about it, you know, I have kids and you worry about if that's your kid out there flying around making hits like that, you have to cringe every time he hits somebody. But to see him make a hit, bounce up and celebrate and, and be happy and get back to playing football the way he used to, it has to make you feel really good. You have to believe it's been quite an emotional day for Zach Etheridge. It, of course, began with the traditional Tiger Walk and the Auburn fans just showing so much love to Zach Etheridge as he's back on the field here at Jordan Hare Stadium and playing like nothing ever happened. Uh, that's what's so impressive is, is the, his ability to block that out of his mind. You know, most guys would, would kind of come in there timid, you know, and they really wouldn't throw their bodies and fly around the football field like that. But that's what's so impressive about this kid is he's able to put that on the back burner and go out there and get his job done. Well, Auburn uses the two timeouts to get the ball back here. They've got 74 seconds to work with when Darius Carr near midfield to accept the punt from Sullivan. Fifty and brought down from behind at the 49 yard line. A punt of 41 yards. Nick Helms the tackle. 
Gus Malzahn certainly will, will keep his foot on the gas pedal here. He's got a minute left in the half. Certainly going to go ahead and try to get down and get some more points before going into the locker room. Pretty nice first half. Those look like game numbers. First and 10 over from the 49. Rushing for two. Passing for two. Outstanding. Throwing near side. Oh, nice one hand grab by Perel Zachary. And out of bounds. Clock stops with 55 seconds left. Shy of the. This, this is a luck, this is the luxury that Cam has. He's, he, he's he's talented certainly, but he has a ton of talent around him. Receivers like that who can go up and make plays for him is key for a quarterback. Four receivers. Bannon back there with him in the backfield. He flares out. Now Newton looking to run, sidesteps, and takes it to the 28. First down, Auburn with 50 seconds. 10 yard pickup. Newton continues to rack up the rushing yards. 128. Wow. Now looking to throw the ball down the sideline. Adams. Incomplete. Into double coverage. Adams scrambling to create space. Edwards breaks it up. 41 seconds left. Kim just trying to take a shot here. Throws one up in the end zone. No danger in that. He put it up high where only his guy could get it or no one. Gets out of the pressure. Runs it again. To the 10. Remind you of Vince Young at all, Bob? Oh, I guess so. They're going to spot this ball at the 11. 19 yard pickup. First and 10 at the 11 yard line. Newton looking to throw all day. Now to the back of the end zone, incomplete, intended for Adams. Certainly a ball that got away from Cam a little bit there. You know, his offensive line. Together have started over 100 games in the SEC, and you see Cam just sitting back there untouched in the pocket all day to throw the football. Just the ball that got away, sailed on him a little bit, or he would certainly like to have that throw back. That offensive line allowed only 21 sacks all last season in 13 games, none tonight. Newton pressured. Backs up, throws from his own 25 to the end zone, tip, and incomplete as a flag on the play. You know, I love that out of Cam Newton. Field awareness. He recognized he had a free play right there. Throw it up in the end zone, see what happens. It's going to be offsides on Arkansas State. Hall was the man who Offside. got through prematurely. Defense, number 90, five-yard penalty. Repeat, second down. Now we haven't called. Brian Hall's name very often tonight, the preseason Sun Belt Defensive Player of the Year. We haven't. He was a guy we certainly came into the game wanting to talk about, but like we said, Bob, that's that's an experienced SEC offensive line up there that he's having to go against tonight. Fannin take it down at the nine yard line. 10 seconds. Let's see if they can get another playoff here. Got a spike. They have no timeouts. Can they get everybody set? Three, two, and the clock runs out. So Auburn denied another snap, and Gene Chiswick wants to know why. That brings to an end. Gene pointing at the scoreboard clock. Then we had plenty of time, but the ball was not yet marked ready. So we've reached the half, and a very impressive first half for Cam Newton. And we've still got 30 more minutes of football to play tonight here on the Plains. 35 to 16, Auburn leading Arkansas State. 
here at the break as we go downstairs to Jim. Coach Chizik, your offense not able to get one last play there, but we've certainly seen that big strike ability we knew about. You wanted more consistency. Have you gotten that? Well, I think we're still a little bit inconsistent. The penalties are driving me crazy right now. We still haven't improved in that area. We really blew that last thing with three points there at the end. That's very disappointing. Uh, we got to go and get some things fixed and come back out here and play a better second half. I know that. Defensively, you guys got to stop the last time down the field, but they certainly allowed Arkansas State some drives. Where do you see, need to see improvement there? Well, you know, we're just trying to get used to it, exactly what they're doing. It's a new coordinator. I think we have a better beat on it right now. We just got to play much better in the second half. Thank you very much, Coach. Bob? Thank you, Jen. Gene Chiswick joins the rest of his team in the locker room. Fred Hickman coming up in Atlanta with our SEC scores and highlights. Halftime here, Auburn 35 and Arkansas State 16. Back to Auburn, Alabama, everybody. This is Jordan Harris Stadium getting ready to start the second half with Auburn leading Arkansas State 35 to 16. The big story, of course, here in Auburn tonight is the debut of quarterback Camp Newton, and what a debut it has been. He accumulated a grand total of 247 yards in total offense. Four touchdowns in that first half, two passing and two rushing. And we want to show you one of his rushing touchdowns, Tim, because what it does, it accentuates just how a, an incredibly complete player he is. It really does, Bob, and this guy has done it all in the first half. And as you see here, Gus Malzahn's offense wants to create misdirection to give the defense false keys. And what you have here, Cam is rolling to his right after the fake inside. He sees his two guys are covered. And then he see, with his great vision and athletic ability, he sees an opening back here. He plants his foot in the ground, and at that point, it becomes a foot race, and no one is going to catch Cam Newton. Rushing the ball nine times for 147 yards and two touchdowns. Passing the ball six for nine, 100 yards, and had a 48-yard scoring toss. Our Regions Bank first half summary. 35 points on the board, and Auburn was denied. The clock ran out of them. They were trying to get three more on the board at the end of that first half. So quite the offensive display by the home team, and now we're set to go, and Auburn's going to get the football to start this second half. Washington on the return. 20, drops it. And Arkansas State has recovered, I believe. Whistle is blowing. They try to break up the play, and the officials are going to now point and give the ball to Arkansas State. Exactly what you didn't want if you're an Auburn Tiger fan. Nick Helms come in, number 53, right here, and you can see him just strip the ball. And Arkansas State comes out of the locker room down by 19 points. Now they got a chance to get a quick touchdown or they didn't even think they'd have the ball here and get back into this football game. The first turnover of the game. The fumble by DeMond Washington gives Arkansas State the ball at the Auburn 27 yard line. Loss of the ball carrier. Bates coming over to make the tackle. A gain of two on the play. Lawson in the first half netted 24 yards on nine carries. Ryan Applin at quarterback gives to Lawson one more time. And the file goes to the 25, maybe the 24 yard line. Eric Lawson, the 5'11", 210-pound redshirt junior from Jonesboro, Arkansas, the home of Arkansas State. You know, I really expected Arkansas State to come out and be a little more aggressive on those first two plays. After a sudden change like that, where there's a fumble, the defense has to rush out on the field. A lot of times it's, it's, it's to your advantage to go ahead and take a couple shots. Now 
Applin throws. Catch is made. Frampton maintains his terrific balance. And then Dines threw him out of bounds. But not before Arkansas State picks up the first down. Well, this is a guy, he plays in the Sun Belt Conference, but he has SEC speed, Dwayne Frampton. I mean, you can't tackle this guy in a phone booth. He, he makes people miss, and, and that's what you have to have. If you throw a ball short of the sticks on third down, you have to rely on your wide receiver to break a couple tackles and move the chains, and that's what Frampton did there. First and goal, Arkansas State. Applin looks, throws. Intended for Taylor Stockamer and incomplete. Stockamer in that first half caught four passes for 43 yards. I like the aggressive play call right there on first down. Obviously, Auburn was probably expecting a run in that situation. No, nothing wrong with taking a shot on first down. Defensive coordinator Ted Roof of Auburn calls this some beachfront property down here, the red zone that he's trying to defend. And looks for the end zone. Did he get in? Touchdown, Arkansas State. So the turnover leads to a touchdown. Exactly what you want if you're Arkansas State. You know, when you get these turnovers down here, the key is you have to capitalize on them. And that's what they did right there. Great drive by Arkansas State. Number two, Brian Davis. Brian Davis. Took the point after. For the point after with 13-16 remaining in this third quarter. And the kick is good. So Arkansas State takes advantage of the fumble recovery on the kickoff. And they stick it in the end zone. 35-23 Auburn. SEC College Football Saturday is proudly brought to you by your independent auto owners insurance agents. Bob Rathman, Tim Couch, Jen Hildreth back in Auburn. Arkansas State's Derek Lawson with his first touchdown tonight, seventh of his career. And Arkansas State, a heavy underdog, has narrowed the gap to 12, and the kickoff coming to Auburn. Man who fumbled it away to start this second half. Devon Washington gets another opportunity. From the six. Let's go down to the field to Jen Hildreth. Bob, I had a chance to speak with Arkansas State head coach Steve Roberts when he came back on the field, clearly frustrated at the big plays his defense was giving up. But the word he used again and again as for what his team needed to do in the second half was finish. He said our guys are getting where they need to be defensively. They're just not finishing the play. Offensively, he was pretty pleased. 231 yards, 205 in the air. Again, he said we just need to finish the plays. Pretty sure he was encouraged by the start and the touchdown run from Derek Lawson. Absolutely, they are back in this game. 35 to 23, and now Auburn with Cam Newton, who has already made a major dent in the Auburn record book for an opening night quarterback, gives to Mario Fannin, and he is lifted right off his feet. And a fumble. Arkansas State has got it again. McKinnon and Jennings coming up with a big hit and Fannin was decleated as he got to the 30 yard line. Well, you just don't expect those things out of your out of your senior running back. You know, this is a guy that you rely on to care take care of the football, but he just gets popped. This is a nasty defense from Arkansas State. They have a ton of energy and momentum right now and they're flying around. And now Gene Chizik out on the field to talk to his de defensive unit here, and the play is under review. So the SEC replay officials will take a longer look at that play. We'll show you what we have here. Here's Fannin getting to the 30 and dropped, but I could not see the ball pop loose. Now it's hard to tell from that angle, Bob. Too many bodies flying around in there. 
from that angle it's hard to see but you what you can see is the reaction on the Arkansas State sideline. Yeah, that, still can't see the ball. I, I, I think I think that ball's out Bob you can see it a little bit if you look right there you got to kind of look closely in between the players arms but you can see that football bobbling before his knee comes comes down hit the ground. See the ball's out. Yep. The ball's already out. So what a turn of events, Tip Couch, to start this second half. I mean, it was confirmed. First down. If, if you're Gene Chiswick, you, I mean, it's just a nightmare situation. You go into the locker room at halftime, you're already upset about the penalties and the way your defense is played in spots. Now they come out, offensively, you, you, you get a turnover on the kickoff, and offensively on the next play, you give it right back to them and get them right back in the game. Last season, Gene Chiswick's Tigers were just a plus one in the turnover department. They had 24 takeaways and 23 giveaways. And the run will take it to the 29 yard line by Lawson. But you made a great point a moment ago, Tim. This is an invigorated Arkansas State team right now. It really is. College football is so much about momentum and who, who has the big mo on their side. And right now, it's clearly in Arkansas State's favor. Officially no gain, second and 10. Ryan Applin at quarterback. And this one is going to be a completed pass, and Murray making the grab. Tight end Kendrick Murray out of Pleasant Grove, Alabama, returning to his home state tonight. Gain of three to make it third and seven. And a flag. Prior to the snap, false start, offense number 67. Five yard penalty, it remains third down. Left tackle, Keanu Prater. Steve Roberts was telling us during the week how impressed he was with the camp that Prater put together. 6'5, 305 pounds, senior. Fourth Arkansas State penalty for 23 yards. Big crowd making more noise. Fairly with the takedown. Fourth and 13 at the 32. They're going to go for it. And again, movement. Draws the penalty flag. Sifa E2, the right guard. Prior to the snap, ball start. Offense number 71. Five yard penalty. It remains fourth down. You know, I think that has a lot to do with crowd noise there, Bob. Arkansas State had mentioned all week long that at practice they had piped in some crowd noise to try to prepare for this, but sometimes those, those offensive linemen, they just can't hear the count, and they know they're going to be rushing hard on an obvious passing down, and they just jump the gun a little bit. I mean, now you've got to get 20 yards on this play at least, right. well, 18 to be exact, but you got to go for a big play here just to get a first down. Get rid of football. And he eats it. Another flag. Again, more pressure from the edge coming from Carter. Holding on the offense, number 67. That penalty is declined. First down. Well, the Tigers get it. You know, that's a play there, Bob, that Ryan Applin, only in his sophomore year, he'll learn. It's fourth down right there. There's no harm in just go ahead and throwing that football. If they do intercept it, it's just like a punt. It's, I mean, you want them to intercept it, you know, so you can't take a sack in that situation. Throw it up and give you guys a chance. You may get a pass interference call or whatever. 
So the Auburn Tiger offense comes back out after the defense just recorded its third sack of the game. Now Cam Newton will hand off and Ontario McCaleb can't get to the outside. He was denied that time by Tayshawn Holmes. Our Wendy's texted in question tonight. Once again, who do you think will win the SEC championship? Text answers to South. 76884. Message and data rates play apply. And we'll have the scoring a little bit later. With the toss to the near side. This is Sean Kitchens, the freshman. The flag goes down. In his first collegiate game out of College Park, Georgia, the true freshman, Sean Kitchens. A 16 yard gain if it stands. Kenny's getting a lot of face time here, our referee, Kenny Williamson. He is. I'm sure Gene Chizik isn't happy about that. Here's another penalty on, uh, on Auburn here. Pass interference on the offense, number 81. The penalty is 15 yards from the previous spot. Repeat, second down. Looks like looks like it's a pick play o offensively guys like to call it on the offensive side of the ball they call it a rub play but it's uh it's obviously a pick play you know you can't just go block the guy like that you have to make it look like you're trying to run a route and the guy gets in your way and that was he didn't sell it well enough there. <laughs> <laughs> second down and 25. <laughs> Seventh Auburn penalty. football and Arkansas State has recovered again but yes they've got it the Auburn fans in disbelief well we said it earlier Bob Arkansas State is flying around and they're hitting people this is an aggressive physical defense and Gene Chizik is about to lose his mind. He can't believe that they put the ball on the ground three times the last three times they've had it. Now, we barely played five minutes of the third quarter. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. You know, Cam Newton actually got hit really hard on this play, too, on the pitch. And it's, it's hard to tell there. He may have been down on that play. It's hard to tell. It looks like the ball came out late there to me. And Caleb with the fumble, and it looks like this may be reviewed as they stop. The action here, Nick Helms of Arkansas State with his the second play is under further review. His yeah. second fumble recovery as you take a look uh, at the SEC replay booth here at Jordan Hare Stadium. So they may have sensed what you were talking about, Tim, just a moment ago about the timing of that. Yeah, it just didn't look right the way the ball came out. It looked like he was already down. It was just uh, just just didn't look right. It was a little late. Uh, the ball was out a little late and a little late reaction by the defense. If Arkansas State does maintain possession, it would be their third straight possession inside the Auburn 30-yard line. Tayshawn Holmes making the tackle here. I, I think he's down there, Bob. What do you think? I would say by a 51-49 vote, I, I would say that he is down. <laughs> Await the decision from the booth. I mean, think of the frustration for the Auburn offense. I mean, they go into that locker at halftime. Did good job. Cam had a great half, 35 points. We get the ball back, start the second half. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> has gone right since. No, certainly not. It's uh, you no know way to plan for things like this. You know, you never think you're going to go out and do these things. But, you know, as Gene Chiswick talked about to us, Bob, he said, you know, the expectations are so high for this football team. This is why he said, hey, we're not there yet. You know, we have a lot of young players on this football team, and, and it's showing. Well, the two coaches await the decision. Both offenses and defenses are ready, depending on the call here. We have 9.57 left in this third quarter. And just a 12 point lead for Auburn at 35 to 23. I think we have a white puff of smoke out of the chimney. <laughs> 
after further review, video evidence shows that the runner was down. Therefore, the Dolphins ball, third and five at the 25 yard line. Well, we're two for two on replay so far this year, Bob. I think we're off to a good start. <laughs> so, the offense for Auburn and the defense for Arkansas State coming back out. The play resulted in a loss of four yards. And McCaleb went down. I've been very impressed with Arkansas State's defense end line to end line. They've been able to, for the most part, choke off the corner. Of course, the X factor is Newton. Mm -hmm. But when everybody else carries the football, yeah, uh, they, they do a pretty good job of lateral pursuit. They really do. They run sideline to sideline, and, and, and as you've seen the last few plays, when they get there, they get there with an attitude. Well, they've got an extra running back they've got to worry about, and so will all defensive coordinators in the SEC this season. And Cam Newton, Auburn's one for three on third down. situation here where Cam needs to this is where he can become a leader. He needs to right the ship. Guys are looking at him right now. Things are kind of going haywire. When this happens, they're going to look to the quarterback and they're going to say right the ship. And Cam Cam has the ability to do that. All he has to do is make a couple plays like he did in the first half and get the momentum going back to his side. The officials I think are confused. They moved the chains on the far side prematurely. And now they've got to get the sticks straight. It's third down. And we had a first and 10, then a 15 yard penalty, then the four yard loss. So they've got to get the sticks right on the far side. You can always tell there's a problem when the guys start pointing. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. You see a lot of finger pointing. You know, it's going to it's going to take a while to sort these things out. <laughs> yeah. It should be third and. 28 correct maybe third and 20 I guess they made it a three yard loss so third and 28 not that that would be much of a deterrent to Cam Newton <laughs> you never know you never know with him back there what can happen he can he can break off a run for this or you know you just He's got to take a chance. Got to be careful back here too, though, Bob. You're backed up a little bit. At almost an impossible conversion here on a third and 28. So expect a screen or a draw right here. Just get out of here. Next week we will be with you in Little Rock, Arkansas, as we take a look at Heisman Trophy candidate Ryan Mallett and the Arkansas Razorbacks. They are beating Tennessee Tech 44 to three at the end of three quarters tonight. And we will see them match up with Louisiana Monroe at 7 Eastern, 6 Central from Little Rock at War Memorial Stadium next weekend. Hope you can join us next Saturday night. So it is officially third 28. And everybody is in position. Cam Newton ready to go at quarterback. What a night he has had. hundred and forty seven yards rushing Cam with the throw down the sideline looking for Adams and broken up Auburn screaming for a flag none coming. Walter Moody doing a great job in one on one coverage. Yeah nice job there by Walter Moody staying step for step with Darvin Adams. As you can tell, the crowd wants a little pass interference there, and uh, looked like it was close. Had a little wrap around yeah, the waist. Had a little wrap around there. He may have got away with one there. So now an armored punt. Ryan Shoemaker under pressure. A lot of hang time. And a fair catch made by Frampton at the 36. 39 yard punt, 35 23 Tigers. I'm Fred Hickman with a studio update for you. North Carolina and LSU playing at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. It was 10 7 Carolina when this happens. Russell Shepard, 50 yards on the touchdown rail run. LSU scores again. They're now a 23 10 over the short handed Carolina team, Bob.
Thank you very much, Fred. The rest of the SEC scoreboard, the big upset in Oxford today. Tennessee has won tonight in Derek Dooley's debut. Kentucky wins in Louisville, and Joker Phillips' debut is a head fan at Kentucky. 35 to 23 here, and Arkansas State's got the ball back and a completed pass to the 41 yard line, and Allen Muse. Muse had a couple of catches for 72 yards in the first half. As Arkansas State continues to move the football here. Second and five. Second and five. Well, we've talked a lot about Cam Newton, but uh, the Arkansas State quarterback, Ryan Applin, has been very impressive in his own right tonight. This one intended for Frampton. Tonight's game is presented in high definition by H.H. H. Gregg. Yeah, I think Ryan Applin, like you said, Bob, has really shown what he can do. You know, no one really knew what to expect of him coming in as a sophomore in this type of environment, and he's gotten off to a great start and had a great game so far. 21 out of 29 for 229 yards and a touchdown. Pretty impressive. Applin throws. And too tall for Frampton. So Auburn gets the three and out. And the ball back with 9.20 left in the third period. Neely Sullivan, the red shirt junior, ready to punt it for Arkansas State. And back for Auburn. Is Quindarius Carr, the junior from Huntsville. Last year, Auburn was last in the SEC. They averaged just 4.5 yards per punt return. Carr grabs this one with a low line drive, and will take it to the 30 out to about the 31 yard line, a 36 yard punt. Breaking the action from Jordan Hare. Opening night in SEC college football. Here are tonight's fans of the game, presented by O. Charlie's. The Auburn family reunited on the plains at Jordan Air Stadium. And an interesting contest, to say the least. 35 23. Auburn coming up, ready to snap it. They've had the ball for a grand total of 52 seconds in the second half. And on average in the first half, their longest possession lasted only 239. Here's Dyer out to midfield. Well, there you see the good side of Michael Dyer, the ability to run the football. Everyone knows he can do that. Now, some people ask, why isn't he playing more? You know, he's, got, he's the best running back in the country last year. Well, he has other things he needs to improve on before they can stick him out on the field. Takes it to the 45-yard line, a true freshman from Little Rock, Arkansas, making his heralded debut in front of the home faithful. You know, certainly his, he had a lot of hype coming in also, Bob. You know, people were as just as excited to see him run the football as they were to see Cam come out here and throw it. So he's not letting anyone down either. Dyer again, third straight carry to the 40 and 38 yard line. First down, Auburn. Seven yard pickup. And he'll come out of the game. Nice job. Cam Newton comes under center. He still got it. Wants to throw. Looking and finding fan and wide open. Touchdown, Auburn. Steve Roberts has to be thinking, I'm sure glad Cam Newton doesn't play in the Sunbelt Conference. <laughs> I'm sure he is. And vice versa, everyone in the SEC is going, what are we going to do with this guy the rest of the year, Bob? <laughs> what a weapon. Fannin's second touchdown pass, the third touchdown throw for Cam Newton tonight. Bynum's PAT, 
42 to 23. Yeah, it's just a situation here where Cam Newton is looking to throw the ball down the field on the deep post. Hangs in there and he's going through his progressions and they obviously forgot to cover the flag because this is actually his third read. He goes in untouched for a touchdown. On a very impressive night, what has caught your attention the most about Cam Newton? I would say, you know, it's just hard to pick one thing. He's just so talented. But I, if I had to pick one thing, it would be his poise. His po I mean, obviously the physical skills are there, but for a quarterback, it's the intangibles. Things have went crazy here a little bit in the second half for Auburn. They didn't start off great for Auburn. Cam has righted the ship every time they needed him to, and that's what you look for in your quarterback, and he's done it time and time again. 42-23 Auburn. And that, that was the big question that Gene Chizik had in his mind. How would he handle all of this. He hasn't been hit. You know, he had the orange shirt on all mm -hmm. in the spring game and all through fall practice. So you know, he's only been hit really one time tonight, but nothing in terms of a big hard hit when he was running the football. He's handled that. He's handled the emotions of the day. He's handled his crowd. He's handled the game, his uh, quarterbacking responsibilities, and his leadership role. And he has, even though it, it has, as you mentioned, gotten crazier tonight. Seemingly, he has not flinched. Turn Frampton. Not this time. Great coverage and a loss of 12 after the uh, a 12 yard gain, I should say, was all it was for Frampton. Yeah, we talk about great opening days in the SEC. Bo Jackson had 290 rushing yards to set the conference record back in 85. And look at down there at the bottom, Tim Couch. <laughs> you know, Bob, that was one of those days. I woke up with a little touch of the flu that morning. Really wasn't feeling good. I knew it was going to be a bad day. So I was a little off that day. I wanted to get 500 on. 498 <laughs> against Louisville. <laughs> at the fumble. And he was the only guy who seemingly could find it. Applin saw it near the line of scrimmage, dives on it. It's a loss of three. Heads up play by quarterback here. You know, he just bobbles a snap, and instead of, you know, panicking, he finds the football and gets back down on it quick. Third and 14. Applin throws down the sideline, complete near the 30-yard line, and Stockmer is wrapped up by Zach Etheridge. 14-yard pickup. Nice ball there by Ryan Applin, showing some, some big-time arm strength. Cam Newton has shown he's got a big arm. Applin wants to show he can throw it down the field as well. Four receivers for Auburn to come to here. Applin will go with the handoff and a gain of a yard by the running back as Bates was stopped as once again lost in the ball carrier. Darren Bates has had a big night defensively. Nine total tackles. He has been flying around. This whole Auburn secondary has been flying around. Darren Bates of Mississippi native was all set to go to Arkansas State until there was a coaching change here and he decided to come to Auburn. The throw complete to Stockmer. And it's going to be a second down. Coming up in about eight yards to go. Receiver was Lucius Henderson. Tim Roof showing a different looks blitz packages tonight. He is. He's trying to confuse Ryan Applin. Obviously, this being his first start, he's, he wants to show him a ton of different looks and just not let him get comfortable in the pocket. Throwing complete. To the 38 and Lawson. Lawson has rushed the ball 14 times tonight. 
That's his first reception. Not enough for the first. And Ted Roof's defense will force the punt. When Darius Carr, the deep man for Auburn. Dean Garrick is the punter. Carr from the 10. And pushed back to the nine yard line. Kill Crease. Credited with the tackle on the special teams. A 52 yard punt by Dean Garrick, a native of South Africa, who was a former rugby player turned punter here for Arkansas State. 42 23 Auburn with 5.31 to play in this third quarter. And Cam Newton comes back out at quarterback for Auburn. The conference game on the road looming at Mississippi State this coming Thursday night. Newton throws and it's incomplete. Darrell Zachary couldn't get to that one. Yeah, interesting play there by, by Cam Newton. It looked like he had a read on the, with Michael Dyer there, whether to hand him the ball or keep it. He did decide to keep it, and once he did, he got out there and saw he didn't have anything, so he tried to release it out to his outlet receiver, Terrell Zachary, because he was still behind the line of scrimmage and, and still able to throw the football. Just got away from him a little bit. Second at 11. Incomplete. Intended for Darvin Adams. Five oh nine left in the third here. And a third down and eleven coming up. Eight as Newton sets. Dyer did not get the first down. Moody there to push him out. A nine yard pickup. It'll be fourth and two. Ryan Shoemaker has come in to punt it away here. He's averaged 39 yards per punt. Frampton ready to receive it. And a hang time. Frampton fair catches at the 42 with 431 remaining in the third period. Let's update you on some of the other scores we mentioned will be in Arkansas and Little Rock next week for their game against Louisiana Monroe. Mississippi State rolling in Starkville 49 nothing over Memphis and Vandy as Robbie Caldwell takes over the helm of the Commodores giving Northwestern a fit in Nashville 10 9. 30 to 10 now LSU winning at the Georgia Dome. Here 42 23 Auburn. Applin looking to throw. Dumps it over the middle, juggled and controlled, taking it outside for the first down, and then some is Henderson. And that is a 14 yard gain. Lucius Henderson, a senior out of Austin, Texas, a junior college transfer into the program. A nice catch and run. Good start to the drive there. They spread them out going in a five wide package right here, trying to spread Auburn out defensively. Work in the middle of the field. Under pressure, Muse juggles and can't control it. 
Well, Auburn brought the heat that time. They did bring the heat, and it's good recognition by Ryan. Ryan uh, Applin, he, see, he saw the blitz, hit his uh, side adjustment on a quick slant right there. They just didn't convert, and you just wouldn't, uh, wouldn't able to hang on. Second and ten. Applin started three of the four games last year, last four games, and won two of them for Arkansas State, then underwent offseason shoulder surgery. Lawson. To the 37 yard line. Blanc there to get credit for the first hit. 7 yard pickup, third and three. Big play here for Arkansas State. This is a drive that they need to come out with some points on if they want to get back in this game. They try to bang it inside with Robertson and the Auburn defense is right there at the point of attack. And coming over that's our freshman Whitaker. Whitaker's a guy they're really high on you know when you mention his name to the coaching staff you can see their eyes light up they they really feel like he can be, he has the potential to be a special player. Jeffrey Whitaker a true freshman out of Warner Robins Georgia. True freshman now, 6'3", 308. It's a big boy. Haplin asks for time. Faced with a fourth and four. They've missed on their only fourth down conversion attempt so far. Arkansas State burns the first of their three timeouts here in the second half. 2.49 remaining here in this quarter. The fourth down coming up here, Bob. I think, you know, you, in these type of situations, and so far in the game, they've tried to get the football to Dwayne Frampton. I, I would expect them to do the same thing here. Auburn has shown in these fourth and third and fourth and short situations, they like to bring some heat, try to make the quarterback get out of his hand quick. So look for them to try to get something quick to Frampton. In our meetings yesterday, talking with Gene Chizik and the coordinators, one point that Gene stress, Ted Roof and uh, Gus Malzahn, the leaders of the specialties. But Gene was saying how his entire coaching staff is back and what a difference that has made with these young men. It really does. It makes a huge difference when you have the same coaching staff intact and you get to run the same systems over and over instead of having to come in each year and relearn the system. Trooper Taylor is waving that towel and here we go on fourth down. Applin looking, throws, incomplete. Nice poke away by Nico Thor. The man who saved the Outback Bowl in Tampa last January comes up with a nice play here. He sure did, and boy, he was he was actually beat on the play there. Taylor Stockemeyer had a step on him, and Nico Thor with some makeup speed got a hand in there in the last second and knocked that one away. So Auburn gets the football first and ten. At the 38 yard line. 42 23 lead. Auburn really needs to establish a run game here with Michael Dyer. Get him going. And Dyer gets the carry. Dyer over the 45 and down to the 43 yard line. A 19 yard gain, Jen Hildreth. A pure runner. That's how Gus Malzahn described this freshman Dyer. He said he's got balance, he's got vision, and he hits that hole hard. Picks up a couple to the 40 yard line. That gives him 65 yards for the night on his eighth carry. Not a bad debut. Yes, we've been extolling the virtues of Cam Newton. Dyer's <laughs> put a nice night together in his debut game. Well, Zachary, the motion man. Cam looks to throw. Now run. And out of bounds. I like that play by Cam Newton right there. Instead of forcing something, a turnover right there, and you know, may give Arkansas State a chance to get back in this football game. Just, just run out of bounds. You know, get what you can get. Get two yards right there. Live to play another down. Go Tigers! Go Tigers! Go Tigers! 
good. Coming up on two minutes to go in this third period. Plenty of protection. Down the middle. Caught to the two. Quinn Darius call. 39 yard pass flow. You know, it's just it's just a vertical route here. They, they're putting pressure on this safety right here and forcing him to make a choice. If he turns his shoulders to the inside, that's all Cam is seeing. As soon as those shoulders turn, he feeds it out there to Quintarius Carr for a big game. Dyer denied his first collegiate touchdown. Harold with the tackle out of his middle linebacker spot. His fifth of the night. Dyer out. Eric Smith in. At that H-back spot for Auburn. Bob Cat with Tony Burns. And he spins, but can't escape Jennings. MD Jennings. A free safety coming up to make the hit. He's been very active tonight with eight tackles, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery. Yeah, Arkansas State just sitting on this. You know, they know Cody Burns when he's in the game at the Wildcat position. They want to run the football with him like they did in the first half where he scored a touchdown, so they're ready for it. Now they put Newton back in at quarterback. Michaela, the setback. Zachary in motion. Newton looking. Backside pressure, and he's taken down. It took until 30 seconds left in the third quarter. But M.D. Jennings got to him in a loss of five. Yeah, great job by M.D. Jennings here chasing Cam Newton down from the back. Cam obviously doesn't see him coming, and, or he would have got rid of the football there. But, you know, you just no, – nothing open. You know, nothing wrong with kicking a field goal here. You have a big lead. You just don't want to force anything down here. A 25-yard attempt. Nails it. So, roll up three more points for Auburn, and that will bring us to the end of the third quarter. We head to the fourth and final at Jordan Hare. Been a while. Auburn 45, Arkansas State 23. I want to show you what happened on the changeover between quarters. Cam Newton. Brings the whole team down to the other end of the bench area to fire up the student section. And yes, they have fallen in behind their new leader, literally and figuratively. 45 23, our Jeep game summary through three quarters. And you see the total offense numbers there for Newton 186 on the ground, 141 in the air. You know, you see Cam Newton firing up the crowd like that, Bob. He talked in our meeting how he had so much respect for Tim Tebow when he played with him in Florida and the way that the teammates looked at Tim Tebow and had no doubt that that was their guy. So I think he's trying to, you know, in a way, look at what Tebow did, and that's obviously a good thing. Cody Parkey's kick to Hall. Greg Sanders coming down to make the special teams tackle a 21 yard return just underway fourth quarter here from Auburn in a 45 23 game Be in Little Rock next week Arkansas won their game 44 to 3 over Tennessee Tech tonight that one in Fayetteville Auburn getting points on the board with the field goal it was their longest drive of the night Two minutes and 45 seconds. And another big defensive play. DeMond Washington this time going to get Ryan Applin. You know, if I'm Arkansas State right here, I'll, I'll, I'd go back to that five wide package they had a lot of success with a couple drives ago and spread that, that Auburn defense out a little bit and try to find some seats and uh, throwing lanes in there where they can get some big plays.
complete to the 30-yard line and loss of And that is going to be close to a first down. He got it. Savage the tackle. 11 and a half yard gain. So it's first down at 10 for Arkansas State at the 35 yard line. And a whistle blows the play dead. Penalty flag. Timeout. Auburn. Auburn First time out takes a timeout to avoid the 12 men on the field penalty. Yeah, that's one thing. A timeout in Auburn. 14.01 left. Football Saturday is brought to you by Z-Max, by Jeep, by Academy Sports and Outdoors, and by Wendy's. All roads lead to Toomer's Corner here in Auburn, Alabama. <laughs> and of course, after a significant uh, athletic achievement, they are less a few hundred rolls of toilet paper. 1401. Remaining in our ball game, and the pass is complete out to the 38 yard line. Coming again is Alan Muse to make the catch at 35 Jonathan Evans has gotten some playing time tonight the sophomore from Pritchard Alabama he was the young man who started the Alabama game here last fall the day that Gene Ruth could dress only three scholarship linebackers and we have got a pickoff on the far side for Auburn and that's to Sharman Bell tight roping that sideline now they're going to say it's incomplete yeah, just trying to hit him on an out route here. And uh, obviously the ball is just a little bit late. You can see a little hesitation on him, and, and the defensive back just broke on it. you got to throw those routes on time. Third and seven. Pressure coming. Incomplete over the middle. And another good stick, this time by Mike McNeil. Robinson, the intended receiver. 45 to 23 here. Good one going in Nashville. Northwestern 17, Vanderbilt 15 late in the third. When Darius Carr has had a very busy night returning punts tonight. Dropping back to his own 25. Fair catch this time at the 30 yard line. With 13 18 to play and a timeout at Jordan Hare. The SEC outright of this season. Four choices, and there you have it. Most of you like Auburn. Right now, let's get you back out to Auburn. Five and two. Guys? Fred, I guess the vote totals from Oklahoma just came in. <laughs> Pushed Auburn over the top. A running play out over the 40 to the 43 yard line by Ontario McCaleb. We talk about Cam Newton tonight and, and what he has been able to accomplish. He has accounted for 64% of Auburn's total offense, 186 yards passing and 141 yards rushing. Now you talk about a league of great quarterbacks. Fred just showed you some of Ryan Mallett's night tonight. You see him next week in Little Rock. Boy, this guy in his first SEC game for the Auburn Tigers. Avoids the contact here and goes down to 48. Very smart play there by Cam Newton. This game is, you know, hopefully in hand for Auburn, the way they're thinking, and, and he just don't want to take a hit right here. There's no need to take a big hit, so, you know, you got to be there next week and the week after that, so just get down, don't take a big shot. And when you say next week, it's just this Thursday exactly. for Auburn. 
Yeah, it's a quick turnaround, so you know you want to get out of this game as healthy as possible. Cam runs it. Breaks into the secondary. Bangs his way down to the 34-yard line. A 19-yard gain. Just keeps piling on the stats, doesn't he, Bob? <laughs> and you see him finish that run, too, is what I like about it. You can see the defensive backs just bouncing off this guy. 12 minutes to go in the ball game. Dyer hit. Wonderful tackle by Brandon Joyner. The Auburn record for most net yards gained in a game is held by Damian Craig, 445 against Army in 1976. Uh, 19, excuse me, 1996. 75 yards rushing and 370 yards passing. Dyer. Elusive, I think, <laughs> might be the term that comes to mind. I would say they have a few playmakers on this offense. You know, it's a nice little wraparound handoff right here, and it's just Dyer being athletic. I mean, you, you got to remember, this guy was in high school last year. He's out here making plays. He's gonna. This guy's got nothing but bright future ahead of him. Newton currently at 349 yards, and Dyer now 10 carries, 69 yards. Dyer once again upside. And he takes it to the 12. Woods the tackle. Clock rolling here in the fourth quarter. 10-35 and counting. You know, this is a perfect situation. We talked how Dyer hadn't necessarily picked up the blocking schemes yet in pass protections, and this is a game where you can really get him some work because you don't need to throw the football in this type of situation. You can just get him in there and get him some reps running the football. Nowhere to go this time. And Dyer can take it to the 10th. You often hear the, the football axiom teams make their greatest improvement from week one to week two. But with the short work week for Gene Chizik at the Tigers with that Thursday game starting, you might see the most significant improvement in this Auburn team between week two and three. Yeah, certainly so. You know, once they get into conference play next week and they have this game under their belt, there's, there's a, you would expect them to continue to get better as the season goes on. Newton's going to run it. And he's pulled down at the two. M.D. Jennings. Well, what a terrific night he's had defensively. M.D. Jennings has been all over the field, but, you know, we've talked about Cam Newton right here, just stiff arm. He's just so big and hard to bring down down here. He's going to be such a weapon as the year progresses as far as red zone production. He's, he can run the football down here, spread them out, do some quarterback draws, some quarterback leads, those type things, where he can, he, it's just unlimited the packages you can put in with this guy. That's a good feeling, Bob. I, you know, the first go, touchdown go, in college go. athletics, and you gotta, you gotta know that that's not going to be his last one. He's going to have a bunch more of those, but uh, you always remember that first one. And Auburn breaks the 50-point plateau, 51-23. And Byron's kick is a good one. 9-11 to play. Auburn 52, Arkansas State 23. Back at Jordan Hare, 52-23. We send it down to Jim. 
on that last drive for Auburn Bob sustaining the drive running the ball and they did a lot of it to the left side by veteran left tackle Lee Zimba who was named the most improved offensive player in the spring he really worked on his technique and getting better and he was so frustrated earlier in this game guys when he got called for a penalty it was the drive that was finished off by a 72 yard Cam Newton touchdown run and Zimba was still mad about him getting that penalty after the touchdown really taking it personally. Frampton trying to get to the outside, denied, and brought down to the 21-yard line. Zip is going to be playing on Sundays next year. This is a young man who made the decision to return for this final campaign, and he leads what I think is a quite a luxury for a new quarterback in Cam Newton, a veteran offensive line. You've got guys, they total right. over 100 SEC starts amongst them. Well, certainly so, Bob, and, and, and it's, it's a great, uh, great asset for a young quarterback. And why you see Zimba was so upset right there, he considers himself a leader of this football team, and he is he made a penalty, and his coach is stressed, no penalties, no penalties. So that's why he's so upset, and that's what you look for out of your senior leader. Robertson. As Arkansas State has changed quarterbacks, Phillip Butterfield has taken over for Ryan Applin here with a score of 52 to 23. Butterfield is a 6'2 redshirt freshman from Lake Hamilton, Arkansas. With Applin undergoing his shoulder surgery was Butterfield who took the majority of the snaps in the spring. You know, I was, I was certainly impressed with the way Applin came in here and played today. He's a competitor. He was accurate. He was smart. Everything his coaches said he was, he showed he was tonight. And the pass complete on the far side. And it is Andre Smith making the grab on that one. His first catch tonight. The redshirt sophomore from Kyleen, Texas, has been moved to the tight end spot this season. Also taking snaps as a quarterback. Also played as a wide receiver. To the sideline. And this time it is Carlos McCants with the grab. Just to finish up the Applin story. 28 of 48. One touchdown, no interceptions, and 278 yards. Very solid game, Bob. And you and I were uh, both talked about it. We were so impressed the way he started this game off. And all the hype, all the pressure, first game of the year out of the blocks, Auburn blitzing all over the field. He handled the situation really well. Lawson to the 45. And there's progress marked there. A gain of two. It'll be second and eight. Seven and a half to play in this fourth quarter. Alabama won their game over in Tuscaloosa against San Jose State tonight. One of the big stories there was Trent Richardson. A couple of touchdowns, 66 yards. As he takes over for the injured Mark Ingram. Still don't know if Mark can play next week against Penn State out of the knee scope earlier. Butterfield throwing. And another completed pass. So Butterfield opening some odds. I'll tell you, you got to be impressed with Butterfield also. This team is certainly loaded at quarterback. That's not an easy throw right there. It's a, a corner route drilled in between two defenders to Andre Smith. That's that's an impressive throw. First down from the 41. First and 10, Arkansas State at the 41 yard line of Auburn. Incomplete pass. The pass intended for RJ Fleming. Incomplete. Fleming, the intended receiver. Second down. It'll be second down. Cam Newton has set a new Auburn record tonight. Single game rushing mark for a quarterback. 171 yards. The old record was 160. Established by Phil Gargas in 1974. Yeah, you know, Bob, when he came into our meeting, he had uh, some headphones on and referred to him as a defense mechanism so people wouldn't talk to him on campus and stop him from getting where he wanted to go. After this game, he managed to wear some shades and a hat and <laughs> some, something else to disguise himself a little more. Knocked out of bounds by number three, Chris Davis. What a night 
for Newton. And like all of us sneaking a peek at the replay. 52 23 Auburn. As Arkansas State has it third and short. And that time the great pursuit. That time. 92. Coming through for Auburn uh, to make that tackle. Kenneth Carter coming up to make that hit. Fourth and one. Fourth and one. This is the ninth play of the drive. First down, Arkansas State. Nice run by Jermaine Robertson. Jermaine Robertson. And you know, everything that Steve Roberts told us about his football team is held up tonight. He said his football team would play 60 minutes. They're doing that. He said his football team would not be intimidated coming in here into Auburn. They certainly weren't. They've, they've, they have everything to be proud of, hold their head up high. They've, they put on a good performance here tonight. It will be a lot of any defense to try to put a plan together to slow down Cameron Newton. Henderson. But one thing that has gone unchanged in this conference is that there are 11 other defensive coordinators <laughs> that'll come up with a pretty good plan. They always do. You know, no matter what the talent is that you have, they, they'll, they'll try to find a way to figure it out to stop it. Injured Auburn man is Chris Davis. And a stoppage for that with 5-10 to play. being helped to his feet. Let's take a look at our right stuff leaders from Academy Sports and Outdoors. And you see Newton's uh, big night tonight offensively. Fannin catching the ball, not running it so much tonight with four catches and 65 yards. Darren Bates all over the field defensively. Out of that linebacker spot had 10 tackles. Down on the bench. This is Barrett Trotter, the backup quarterback, the sophomore from Birmingham, warming up the right arm. Apparently Cam Newton's night is is through. Yeah, I think he's probably done enough, shown enough here, and uh, get him out of the game, start to rest him. It's a quick turnaround. They play a Thursday night next week, so start to get his legs back under him, and no need to take any more hits tonight. I think one of the big things for Cam and Auburn tonight. He got so many reps in this mm -hmm. game. And that, that's exactly what they wanted to get him coming into this game because we mentioned earlier he's coming out of Bland Junior College last year. This is his reintroduction Second back into the five. SEC and big time Number college 20. football. And it was great to see him do a lot of things. He ran the ball. He threw the ball well. So uh, all in all, a great night for Cam. To the 24. Robertson. The ball carrier for Arkansas State. Jermaine from Tuscaloosa. A couple of yards to make it third and six. What a field throw. Caught but out of bounds. McCants brought it down. But out of play. Well, I'll tell you, Auburn has not stopped blitzing. Philip Butterfield took a big time shot right there by Jessel Curry. It's it's they're they're not letting up. They're staying with their game plan. All red zone. Every time they've been down here in the red zone, they've continued to blitz and get pressure, and they're they're not letting up just because this game is is almost over. Seven quarterback pressures on the Arkansas State quarterbacks tonight. Play clock at four. 
And Arkansas State will take a timeout here. They have one remaining. Let's take a look at our Z-Max performance recap tonight. The starting quarterbacks with their numbers. And both did a lot of good things. They both did a lot of good things for their football team. And I'll tell you, Ryan Applin is, is almost as, as impressive as Cam Newton was. I mean, who would have expected him to come in here and throw for 200 and almost 280 yards and a touchdown, not turn the football over? You know, we talked early, the keys to the game, when he had to manage the, the situations, not get, in, not get behind the eight ball, not get in third and longs and those type of situations. And you can see he didn't have many of those because he had no turnover. So I thought he played really well. Cam Newton with that big smile. And I think Auburn fans are feeling just the same way about him. <laughs> Gene Chizik will not be so happy because he's got to dissect this pretty quickly and get this team ready to play on Thursday night. 31 yard field goal attempt. And it is good. The 41 yard A 41 yard field goal for Davis gives Arkansas State. Three more points. With four minutes, 16 seconds. So 416 left here in the fourth quarter, and now 52 to 26. See Michael Dyer there on the sideline getting congratulations for a first game out of the blocks. Not bad for a young man to come out of high school and perform like this, and just nothing but uh, good things for him in the future. Tim, looking back on your collegiate career at Kentucky and opening games, what were some of the, the things that you had to adjust to that fall practice just didn't give you? Was it the speed of the game and the contact? Was it, from a quarterback standpoint, it was certainly the contact. And that's what you worry about. It's, it's, you, you just want that first hit so bad because you have the red jersey on all off season long. No one gets around you. No one touches you. So you know when you walk into that stadium for the first game, Hey, I'm live here. You know, I'm taking shots. This is for real. I, I got it. It makes you speed up a little bit because you know you have to get rid of the football quicker because guys are flying at you. So, yeah, it, it certainly speeds the game up for you a little bit. And, you know, we mentioned the old axiom about teams improving week one to week two. Why is that so? Well, it's just that first game is hard. It's the unknown. You know, just, you know, you've practiced all year against your team. Now you get to go out here in the week one, and you're not real sure what they're going to do. You know, like Auburn's coaches mentioned to us in the meetings, we'll just adjust as we go. You know, we don't know what they're going to do exactly. We, we have an idea, but who knows? They may have been practicing something totally different all fall camp. So it's just the unknown, I think. 13 play, 54 yard scoring drive, resulting in the Davis 41 yard field goal for Arkansas State. And boy, you talk about eating the clock. That was four minutes and 56 seconds, the longest drive of the night. <laughs> On the return, Washington. Finds a hole. Breaks a tackle. And brought down from behind. A little, a little zigzag route, but they made it. Well, the start of a football season means the return to campus for so many. And there's athletic director Jay Jacobs, who oversees this fantastic athletic program here at Auburn University. And so much going on. You have a game weekend and a Labor Day holiday weekend like this. And uh, it's the start of the academic year, start of the football season. Uh, every week, it seems like, is, is a homecoming in some regard. And we want to thank Jay for his hospitality this weekend. Eric Trotter in a quarterback for the Auburn Tigers. And this. Is going to be Davis Hooper, the running back. We are getting deep into Kim Anderson's depth chart. <laughs> you know, we are, and it's, uh, it's a good opportunity for these young kids to get in and get a chance to play, get some game time action.
to the 41 yard line. Davis room for the ball carrier. Coming toward the three minute mark here in this fourth quarter. Long game. Three and a half hours. And nearing its completion here with Auburn putting 52 points on the board. Trotter redshirted two years ago. Didn't play last year because of injury. Now to Briarwood Christian in Birmingham. And the pass is complete. This is Derek Winter making the grab. Nice job out of there, Barrett Trotter. This is what you want to see out of your backup quarterback. You know, when he, he gets to a chance to come into a football game, you want to see him make plays and see what he can do because, you know, as good as Cam Newton is, as big and physical as he is, there's always an opportunity for an injury. And as a backup quarterback, you have to prepare like you're going to be the starter. When you get these reps, you got to come in and take advantage of them. Hooper trying to get to the 40 yard line as we play out the final minute 50 here at Jordan Hare. As we mentioned, the September schedule for Auburn, a Thursday night game coming up in Starkville against Dan Mullen, Mississippi State. Then the Clemson Tigers come here to Jordan Hare. And then the South Carolina Gamecocks. We haven't mentioned their impressive win Thursday night. They did look good Thursday night. They got off to a little bit of a slow start, but I thought Steven Garcia came in and played well. A guy that uh, has kind of been in and out of Steve Spurrier's doghouse, but uh, you know, I'm sure he's uh, sitting pretty right now after that big performance last week. Hooper again, and with his last two carries, Auburn has gone over the 600-yard mark in total offense. 365 approximately on the ground. Attack on that last run, 241 in the air. So Gene Chiswick is off with the headset and ready to take the guys back to the locker room. Many of the 83,000 that turned out tonight have headed for the exits. As we get set for the final uh, 40 seconds of play. Put to the 35, and I think that's going to do it. Be the last play of this game. So the Auburn Tigers win their opener. Gus Malls on, and Gene Chiswick talk, and now Steve Roberts comes to midfield to shake the hand of Gene Chiswick. As the final seconds tick off here at Jordan Hare Stadium, our final score is going to be 52 to 26 in favor of the Auburn Tigers. We will take away a big night from Cam Newton. Yeah, we really will. And, uh, you know, it's not often, Bob, that uh, a guy comes in with so much hype around him that he actually lives up to the expectations. Well, I think he did that and then some tonight. Once again, our final score is Auburn 52 and Arkansas State 26. Join us next week as Arkansas hosts Louisiana Monroe beginning at 7 Eastern, 6 Central here on Fox Sports South. For Jen Hilbert and Tim Couch, this is Bob Rathman saying thanks for joining us and good night from Auburn, Alabama.